Please be with those that were mentioned on our prayer list this morning, Father. We know there are many and that there are many more that didn't even get mentioned. We just pray that you help those people who, who have physical needs, who have spiritual needs, and who have mental needs. And we just pray that you continue to touch them and, and if it's your will, to heal them, Father. Father, we ask that you be with us at this time. Just help us to lay aside all of our worries and fears all that's been on our mind this week, and just help us lay that aside and focus on you. Help us in giving praise and worship. Help us to be filled with the Spirit so we could just worship you in truth. Father, we love you. We thank you so much. Thank you for Jesus, for all that he's done for us. Thank you for the great example you leave for us through your word, and just thank you so much for being our Father. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we give you all the glory at this time. For it's all this in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, let's open up with some announcements here. A couple events going on this Friday night. Believe it or not, it snuck up on us somehow. This Friday night is our community dinner. This is the fourth Friday of the month, so time to have dinner. We're going to have baked potato bar. I believe there's been several people on our band app that's been saying they're going to bring stuff. If you have plans on bringing it, please put it on there so we're not duplicating. We're not getting 100 baked potatoes and, and no cheese. So We probably will. I'm having a feeling there's going to be a lot of people, even with the heat. Maybe that I'm going to put on there that we have a good working AC. And Lord willing, it will stay that way. And we'll finally have the Nanex. Up. Banana, banana pudding. pudding. Banana pudding. Lord, we're banana pudding this <laughs> So be sure to invite people. Uh, if you see it on Facebook, share it with people. Uh, share it with the neighbors and friends, and just come have them come eat a dinner with us. You know, we don't go over there. We're not preaching to them. We're not begging them to come to church. We're just having a dinner. That is literally all it is. Community dinner to get to know the people in our neighborhood and to show them the love of Christ. By sharing a meal. So that's this Friday, 6 o'clock is when it starts, next door. And uh, anyone that could help, please come and help. All right, men's breakfast is the Saturday after that. We're going to meet at David's Pond. So if you were there at the 4th of July, you know where it's at. If you don't know where it's at, guys, get with somebody, one of us guys. Several of us has been there. Get with Farley or, or, or um, Dale. We can give you directions. It's an awesome time for devotion. Uh, I believe we're going to have a pancake breakfast this month, so it's a good time for guys to sit around at the pond and just talk about God and talk about some God. It's, it's some men's stuff, so if you can, what? Yeah, three minutes here from the church, and uh, you're welcome to bring your poles, too. It's stock catfish pond, so you can fish while you're there after the devotional, please. <laughs> so that's at 8 a.m. this Saturday morning. All right, we have our next business meeting. We had one a few months ago, and it was postponed on getting the budget set, okay? So in two, excuse me, three weeks, September 10th, right after service, we're going to have a quick church business meeting. That is everyone who is a member, and if you're not a member, if you just want to come and know what we're talking about, know how the finances are going, that's all that's we're, we're going to talk about unless somebody brings some new business, Okay. It would be in two weeks, but that's Labor Day. That's whenever most people are going on vacation still, so we're going to postpone that for another week, September 10th, right after service, business meeting. Please be here. Shouldn't take about half an hour or an hour at the most. Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Yeah. The restaurants will still be open after that, I promise. Okay? So mark that in your calendar, September 10th. Any more announcements? No. Anyone have a birthday this past week? I know a couple people do. When is Tony? Was that the celebration? Yeah. Tony was the last week. Before. Well, we just we didn't have Did time. Did we get for Macy up here a few weeks ago? Did you come up a few weeks ago? We did. not Yes, you did. Yeah, we did. Anyone have a birthday? Nobody had a birthday this past week. Well, let's pray for those who may have at home. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We just thank you so much for the avenue of life that you give us. We just pray that you put a special blessing on those who had a birthday this past week. We pray that you continue to help them and comfort them, that you provide them, and that they are able to see you in everything. Lord. We pray, Father, a special blessing on them and their families. We just continue to help them in their walk in life with you. Again, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. All right, how about a wedding anniversary where anyone just recently get married? No, ma'am, you will not be. <laughs> many years to come. The Lord will. You either, ma'am. <laughs> Any wedding anniversary? All right, let's pray for this. Heavenly Father, we thank you again. Thank you for the avenue of marriage and love. And we just pray a special blessing on those who had an anniversary. We just pray that you continue to help them to grow closer to each other. But Father, we just pray more importantly they come closer to you. That they put you as their the center and Jesus as the cornerstone. And that they follow you in their days to come. We ask the blessing on their marriage, on their love that they have for each other and for you. And for their families as well, Father. Again, we love you, we thank you, and it's in the authority of Jesus we ask all this. Amen. Amen. All right. Enough of me talking. Everyone will stand. This is going to start our praise and worship time. So although we do have some people leading, let's all praise together. On them again. I am so sorry. You can look it up though. I believe it is 380. Was that what it was? Something like that. Okay. 380 is what I'm saying. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saints of earth shall soon the glory share. The souls of men shall enter it. On forevermore, everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praises. Everybody will be happy over there. Father, sister, brothers will be singing round the throne in that land where no one ever knows of care. And the Christians of all ages will join in the trial song. Everybody will be happy over there. There is a one to save us, and we met this time is grace. And you brought us through that land to bright We will praise his name forever when we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing this praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing this praise. Everybody will be happy over there. We will be happy over there. Kelly says, we don't need to sing that song again. <laughs> What a fellowship, what a joy might be leading on the everlasting heart. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind leading on the everlasting heart. Leading, leading, say thanks and cure from all of us. Oh, how sweet you walk, oh, how sweet you walk in the pilgrim way, leading on the everlasting heart. Oh, how much grows from day to day, leading on the everlasting heart. Me, 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 safe and secure from all alarms. Oh, 
Continue to bless those who are giving right now, Father, that you continue to help them to, to help further your kingdom here. We pray, Father, that you continue to guide us and multiply these tithes and offerings. Help us to do good works with this, Lord. Father, just thank you so much. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're up on a mountain, and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then can't change it. You're down in that valley. Don't lose faith, for you are never alone. For the God on the mountain is to God in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right and the God of the good time is to God in the bad time the God of the day is to God in the Talk of faith when we're up on that mountain. 
talk comes so easy. When like that, it's best that anything changes. We're down in that valley. Don't lose faith, Lord. You're never alone. For the God on the mountain. It's to God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. For the God is the good time. It's to God in the bad times. The God of the day. It's to God in the the God of the day is to God in the night. Amen. Will you stand with us again? <laughs> See, I'm so blessed with Kim. She's she has got my back. <laughs> Even when I drop stuff. This is soon going to stay back there with you. I'm just saying. Susan's like, mm Oh, 
be seated. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Are we muted up here? There's room over your girls board. They try to split up. You've been around these girls or the boys. I mean, <laughs> good morning. Oh my goodness. I think that's why God laid this on my heart today is because we're supposed to be joyful in everything. It doesn't say for everything. It says in everything. So even in our tiredness, we're supposed to be joyful. Can I see a smile? <laughs> she knows I'll get her later. Ben? Ben? <laughs> Girls, can I see beautiful smiles? And boys. I knew you'd smile. Cody's all trying to be like Ben. You lasted a whole lot longer than he did, by the way. So what kind of things do we need to be joyful in every day? Things that we probably don't want to do. Work. Getting out of bed. How about that, everybody? We need to be joyful. You need to wake up joyful. And not bad. When, right, and not bad and not mad. So my advice was... Or frustrated, right. We don't need to be frustrated. When you feel that feeling in your heart, when you feel that feeling that you're frustrated and mad, do you, do you normally have a song in your heart that you can sing though? I don't. <laughs> We're going to get him a song, Grandma. I'll work on it. All right. What about Jesus Loves Me? You know that one. Right? Why can't we, when you wake up and you're like, oh, I already feel like today's going to be a bad day. Instead of getting up right then, just sing Jesus Loves Me. What do you think? Do you think it would help? Sing a, a good song about Jesus. A, a good song that you can make the bad stuff can make go away. The bad stuff go away. I'm going to give up and he's just going to do it from now on, y'all. <laughs> He's awesome, though. He really is. I love him so much, right? So, would you like to pray for us to go next door? Okay. We pray, we pray for God to love us and in our house. We pray for him to, to join us and love us everywhere. Amen. Amen. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Let's try that again. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. salvation and he is the only way we can have eternal life as always i'm glad you're here in person or if you joined us online i saw that there were several who joined online i always try to share the message before i even get up here because there's some people that say we don't ever see when it goes live so if you would though if you have your own facebook I, you know share the share the message get the word out there because more people that hear the truth 
the more people can be affected, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share the good news about Jesus. We're supposed to share that with every creature out there. That way, not one person could ever say they never heard of him. I pray that today you receive many blessings through the message, and I pray that the Holy Spirit fills you and that you're encouraged with the message that we hear today, that you're encouraged in your walk with God, and that it helps you moving forward after this day. Now, last week I started a new series called Two Words of Greatness, and in the series we'll be going over several passages that show us the greatness of God in only two simple words. And I know last week we went over uh, But God, that was our first one, and some of y'all have come to me with some other ones, so if you have more, send them to me, because I... I have an idea for next week. He's kind of convicted me on it, but not fully. So if you have more ideas of these two-word sayings that are in the Bible that are powerful, send them to me. But when I was looking at this, I wanted to, to go over this. I, I, I had the idea of it several, actually several years ago, but the Lord didn't convict me of it at that time. He said, hold up, I got you. He goes, when the time is right, I'll have you teach it. Whenever I was going through it, I, I was a few weeks ago, it finally hit me again. It's like, hey, now's the time. Because why? Because I've heard a lot of people kind of trying to limit God. They take God and they kind of like put him in a box and say, God, you could only do this much, but the rest of it is just not yours. They tend to take it and they, they say, you can handle this, but this part is mine. Well, that's, a, that's totally further from the truth that we can get because God's power is limitless. God is limitless. God is here in the beginning, and he'll be here in the end. And I know for some of us that might be hard to understand, but I pray that you, you're, you're able to be filled with the Spirit today, and you're going to learn more about that. Because today is when we're going to go into more about who God is. It's my prayer that through this series we can see God's greatness even in two simple words. Because he's God, right? His power is limitless. He is limitless. He's everywhere. And he can do anything. Or in our lesson last week, we learned about the phrase, but God. And personally, I, I love that one. To me, that is one of the most powerful two small words that are in the Bible. But God. And in last week's message, the first thing we learned was that how we were saved by grace through putting our faith in Jesus Christ. We learned through God's word how even though we were dead in our sins, even when we are following the ways of the world, and we are consumed by our worldly passions and seen as sons and daughters of disobedience, even then, God loved us. Even then, we see God there. All this was laid out for us. It was in the the scriptures saying, even though you are all this, but God, God stepped up. God showed his mercy. He showed his grace and he showed his love through Jesus Christ. He showed us that his love by sending Jesus to take our place on the cross in order so we could be reconciled back to the Lord and have the chance for eternal life. But God, we learned the truth that salvation wasn't anything that we could ever work for or achieve on our own. Instead, it was a free gift from God. We learned that God shows his love through his son, Jesus, as well. It was brought to our attention that even when we give or it brought to our attention that even when we give our faith to the Lord, we won't stop going through trials and temptations. We won't stop going through those tribulations and and issues that we have in life. It's going to continue. But we also learn through the message that that's where our Christian maturity comes from. That's where our walk with the Lord comes from in our maturity in the fact that it builds character. It builds endurance. And ultimately, it builds hope. It builds a hope in Jesus Christ that we can lean on Him, that we can use Him for our understanding when we are weak, when we just can't get through it, we're reminded that Jesus is there for us. We again were reminded in last week's message that although we were once sinners and each of us has fallen short of the glory of God, at the right time, Jesus came. Jesus came into a world that was corrupt and and needed a Savior, and God knew that that was the right time. 
He sent Jesus so that those who believed in him, those of the whosoever who believed in him, shall not perish but have everlasting life. We learn that we don't have to worry about the wrath of God anymore as a believer in Christ. Instead, we could enjoy the assurance that God is there for us, that he will continue to shed his grace on us as long as we continue to follow him and do the Lord's will. But God are two powerful words that we use in our everyday life to remind us of God's love and his mercy for each of us. Today we have another two words saying, and it, to me it's just as powerful. Today's message is I am. I am. This saying, while two words and only three letters, is extremely powerful in understanding who God is. This is the way that God explained who he was. I am. This saying, it's hard for us to take in sometimes. When we first read it, it's like, well, what do we call you? My name is I am. We'll go over that a little more. But when we think of that in the English language, it's like, well, that's kind of simple. That's kind of, I don't know. But I pray through this message, we're going to see the power of God's word on how he uses just these three simple letters, two words, to describe how powerful he really is. For us humans, we, we try to find ways and, 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 and words in order to describe or relate something. We use it for everything, but when it comes to describing who God truly is, it is hard to do that, isn't it? We could, we could read through his word, we could come up with our own ideas, and we could say this is who God is, but it's hard, isn't it? When you truly think of who he is and what he's capable of, it's beyond our understanding sometimes. God is beyond human measures when it comes to time, to space, to power, he is everywhere, he's in everything, and his power and capabilities are limitless because he is the creator of everything. God is great, and he's bigger than even our human thoughts. And that's what's so awesome about him. It's my prayer that in today's message that each of us will be able to come closer to at least comprehending his greatness, and that we'll be able to understand it in those two simple words, I am. So, if you would, let's open our Bibles to Exodus 3. We're going to Old Testament this time. Exodus 3, we're going to start in verse 1. And let's see what God's Word has for us today. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead us into this truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again. We just ask that you be with us now as we go into this time of study, that we just you open our hearts and our minds and you help us to understand the message you want us to see. Lord, I pray that you lead us into truth and that you show us closer and, and more openly who God is. Help us to understand who you are, what you do for us, and how we are supposed to be in our life. Guide us and protect us at this time, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Exodus 3, verse 1. We're going to actually read the whole chapter. It's not that long. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flocks to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see... God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land 
to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel have come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have observed observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt. And I promise that I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the lands of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they will listen to your voice. And you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of Hebrews, has met with us, and now please let us go a three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand, so I I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will do in it. After that, he will let you go. And I'll give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when you go, you shall not go empty. But each woman shall ask his neighbor and any woman who lives in her house for silver and gold and gold jewelry and for clothing. You shall put them on your sons and your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. This will bring us to our first point today, which is God is near to his people. And I get it. This, this passage was long, but it was, I, I went through it, and I was like, where would be an appropriate stopping point for this? I felt like we had to read the entire chapter there to understand the full story in its context. As we just read, this is the time in history where God physically spoke to Moses through a burning bush. And we read it it must have been an awesome sight to see. We see Moses, he was just out there, he was, he was doing his job. He was a shepherd, basically. He was taking care of his, his father-in-law's flock, minding his own business, going on his way, and in a distance he sees a bush. And this bush is burning with fire. But yet he, he probably watched it for a while. He probably was on his duties, and he was like, what is happening over there? This bush has been burning and burning, and it's just not burning up. So Moses decides, hey, I'm going to go look at this. As Moses nears the bush, we see that God told him to take off his sandals. And, and because he was walking on holy ground. Nothing out of the ordinary here, right? Anyone go home? I know the heat is out there. Does anyone have burning bushes that's not burning? Yeah, it's hot outside, but not quite that hot. This story to me, is an amazing story. It's it's the first story where we see that God truly describes who he is to his people. This was a time that, that he starts to show us who he is and why he's doing what he's doing. He, he, he appeared in a bush that's burning. But then he goes and tells Moses the plan's not just for Moses, but for all the people of Israel. God is on the move here. He's he's wanting to let us know he hears our cries. He's wanting the people of Israel here to know, I hear you, I know you're having issues, I know there's stuff going on in your life, but remember, I'm here with you. 
God begins by telling Moses that he's the God of his fathers. He's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Essentially, he's telling Moses that he's the God of all creation. He is the God. Because we've got to remember, at this time, there was many gods. Many lowercase g gods. The little gods that people were worshiping and, and putting before our Heavenly Father, the one and only true God. He was telling them, I am God. God Almighty. God goes on to tell Moses that he's seen the affliction of his people and he heard their cries and he's come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. He goes on to tell Moses, like, and I'm not doing this myself, by the way. I'm going to use you. He tells Moses, I'm going to use you. You're going to go to the elders and you're going to talk to them and we're going to go do this together. But what does Moses do? Moses does like the norm, like we do, right? When God speaks to us in whatever way it may be, when God first speaks to us and says, I need you to go do this, what do we normally do? We come up with excuses. We get nervous. We figure out ways to get out of it. Or we just totally go the other way, like Jonah did. Moses, in his nervousness, he asked God, who am I to do the work that you asked for me to do? But then God does something awesome. God reminds him, I will be with you. God will be with you. It's the same reminder we should remember today, that God is with us. He, we're not here on this journey alone. When he asks you to do something, that's because he's going to be with you, right by your side, trying to lead you on the way he wants you to go. But again, Moses comes up with another excuse about how he thinks he isn't good enough to do God's work. And he asks, well, what if they ask what your name is? Maybe it might be a legitimate name, but God already told them, as if the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob wasn't enough, he wants another answer. Moses keeps on pushing into something more. So in verse 14, we see that God says this. He says, I am who I am. And he goes on to say, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. He tells them of a name that they should remember forever. That they should, that, that they should remember and put into their hearts that I am is with them. He told them, he gathered there, he told Moses to gather the elders and tell them that he actually appeared to them. That he appeared to them and that while they were in Egypt, he even saw them there and that he's come to help deliver them. He's saying he will bring them up out of their afflictions. We've got to remember, this is a time that, that the, the people of Israel were held captive. They were slaves to the Egyptians they were getting really tired of it all, and they had so many burdens on them, they kept crying out to God. It's like, where were you? You took us out of the wilderness, and now we're captive to these people? Well, that was on their part. They weren't listening to God. God tried to lead them on the right way, and they decided, well, this is all fun and all, but we're still going to go and do our thing. Doesn't sound like today's time, does it? That... We might be on the right track and we might be trying to do things right and we might be really digging into God's word and doing it, but then something else catches our attention. Something else draws us over to it, whatever it is, or someone else draws us to that, and then we kind of lose our focus on God. The same thing was happening to the people today, or that's happening today, happened here. God goes on to tell them that he knows the king of Egypt won't listen to him. And, and he won't let his people go unless God reached out his mighty hand to help them. God knew that this was a huge task that's being asked of Moses. But he reminds them that if he waited with him, if he remembers no matter what you do, I will be with you, that everything would be okay. It was going to be hard. It was going to be work. But he's telling Moses, remember, I'm with you. God's powers are without limits. And we can see here that through this passage from the use of fire, 
just the use of fire, he talked to Moses. It didn't consume the bush. That, you, when I think of that, it's like, that's craziness, isn't it? This fire was burning and then it wasn't? How did that happen? I don't know. Well, it's God. God uses the bush. He, he, he used that. And then we see that he goes all the way from that to say, you want them to know my name? Just tell them my name is I Am. We see God's greatness is shining through here. Now I want us to go back. When you, when you look at that verse 14, go back to verse 14, Peyton, please. When God answers Moses' question about what he could tell the people of Israel to call him, he uses the expression, I am who I am, to introduce himself. And he is doing so as their deliverer. Now in English, that sounds like kind of like a philosophical name, huh? Like when you say that, say, just tell him, I am sent you. Yeah, in English, it kind of doesn't really have that whole power like it should. But in Hebrew, this passage uses a verb that normally translates to mean, I am or I will be. Well, the translation is, in most situations, it's adequate, but... For the meaning of God's name here, and in several other places in the Bible, the same verb comes with the understanding is, it is God himself. It's not just another God out there. It's not just another person out there pretending to be God. It is God himself. When you, I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but when you go into the Hebrew translation, it is even more powerful than the English translation could ever make it be. The people needed to know that God was with them. And that was where this translation came from of I am. They needed to know that he was present with them. And that is precisely what God is announcing to Moses here. That God is near his people. And he was ready to answer the call to their cries. I know, like I said, in English, it's like it, it, it doesn't mean a whole lot. For us, it doesn't mean a whole lot until you know who he is. That he is the great I am. But until you get that, you just kind of don't get that. And God was trying to tell Moses that. Like, hey, in their original language, I am means I am present with you. I am always present. I am present in everything. He is the great I am. In the name I am, God made himself known as a present being, which means he was present with and with and for his people. And wherever God's presence is invoked, that announcement is complete with a certainty and his attention that he'll be there with his care, he'll be there with his power, and he'll be there with his grace. So maybe, please don't think I'm twisting the... the the verbiage here, the scripture here, but maybe another translation or way to paraphrase what he was sitting here talking about in the burning bush would be to say this to the people of Israel. I am present with you. I am present with you has sent me to you. I am present with you has sent Moses to the people of Israel to tell them that God is with them. That God is going to pull them out of their afflictions. That God is going to pull them away from their slavery. God wanted all his people to know that he was near and present to them at all times. He wanted Moses to have hope in his promise and also to give that hope to all his people. Remember, you've got to remember, these people were slaves. They were mistreated. They weren't able to, to do the things they wanted to do. And they kept crying out to God for salvation. Now God, he has many titles in scripture such as Father, Almighty, King, Savior, and Lord. In each of these titles, it really does reveal another role in, in the way he is presented to us. But I am is really, it's more than a title. It's, the meaning is clearly important for us to understand who God is of the Bible. He is the I Am. He is always present. It shows us not simply that God exists, but that He is actually near to His people. 
He's not simply out there. He's there with us. This saying of I am will help us to understand that he will be with us for eternity as long as we continue to follow him and to do his will. Now I know we here we read this is the first account of, of God calling himself I am, but there are definitely more. Y'all know that. <coughs> so let's read in another account. Let's, let's flip all the way over to John chapter 8. We started in the beginning. Let's go to the New Testament now. John chapter 8. Still turning there. Some people are still looking down, so I'll give you a minute there. John 8, and we're going to be in verse 48. All right, it says, The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and did the prophets, yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the, prophet, and the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, in whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I'd be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This will bring us to our, our next point, which is that Jesus is always near and always present to his people. Kind of sounds familiar to the first one, huh? Very similar. Imagine that. But as we open here, we see, we see a scene of escalation, don't you? You see that, that these people are fired up, these Jewish people and Pharisees are fired up, and, and they were talking to Jesus, and they were wanting to know some stuff. Now, for the, for the purpose of time today, I didn't go through the whole chapter like I did in Exodus. But I challenge you, go back. Go back and see what led up to this escalation. Go back and see the, the discussion and arguments that, that the Jews and the Pharisees had with Jesus. Because it's very similar to today. These people were wanting to know who Jesus was and who he proclaimed he was and by what authority he, he, he was saying all of these things. And we learn it's because he's Jesus. He is the Son of God. At this time, though, we read of how the Jews replied to the discussion of how he is of God, and they are not, and they accuse him of being a Samaritan and having a demon. For us, calling somebody a Samaritan doesn't really mean much, but for them, the Samaritans were the outsiders. They were the people who were seen as they didn't have anything good in their life. They were putting Jesus down. They were mocking him. They were saying, you just have a demon in you, and you're just talking all this nonsense. They were mad. The bold words that Jesus told them in truth set them off, and they were ready for a fight. But he told them again. He said that he was there to honor God by bringing them closer to them. He wasn't there seeking honor for himself. He was there to see the glory of God be done. He told them that if they kept his word, they will never see death. This here is just its another way of remarkable claim that makes sense only because we know that Jesus is God. And that he is one with God the Father. 
Now, if that blows your mind, hold on, there's even more, right? But we have God the Father, we have God the Son, and Je Jesus is trying to explain to these people, He am I. He is I. I am He. Excuse me. I'll get those words right. I am He. He is the Son of God. He is the one that the prophets were talking about. <laughs> this here, it just this news outraged the crowd and listeners, and they asked Him, Do you think you're even greater than our father Abraham? For them, that was, that was high. You had God and then Abraham. Do you think you're, you're greater than he? He died. And they reminded him, don't forget, the prophets even died. Jesus was trying to tell them the truth that he was the son of God. That he was the one all the prophets had spoke about. That he was the Messiah to come to save the world. But these people, they were too set on believing their old ways. And their hearts were hardened. And, and they, they wouldn't listen to the truth. So Jesus goes on to tell them, it's like, you don't even know God. You, you, you think that you know God, but you really don't. And you're calling me a liar, but actually you're the liars. This outrages the crowd even more. And in verse 56, he finishes off with this statement with the fact, that their father Abraham rejoiced that he would see the day when Jesus came to redeem the world. And when he saw it, he was glad. Of course, they, they were only thinking in their human minds. They weren't thinking in, in the way that God had proclaimed already. They're like, you're not even 50 years old. How do you even see Abraham? How do you, a young man, think you're greater than Abraham? For them, the, the age was a thing. The age was what set them off. It was like, oh, if you're at this age, you have to have knowledge. That's not always true. Sorry. They were arguing with him in that. But we see in verse 58 that Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. We see that again, this outraged the Jews. But as we read, Jesus hid himself and left the temple. We know that happens often for Jesus because he's God. His powers are limitless. He just We don't know exactly how he got out of there. I actually did some studying on it, and so many of the theologians can't tell you how. They don't know if he just vanished into the crowd or he was there and then he wasn't. They just really don't know because he's God. He's God in person. He's the Son of God, one with God. He's the I Am. Here Jesus would tell him that he has existed from the beginning of everything. And although Jesus, he, he came as a little baby, he was born of this earth to the Virgin Mary as a baby, but he was always there. He was always there with God. From the beginning of the Bible in Genesis all the way to the end of the book, Revelation, Jesus is there. He always was. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. He's limitless. Here Jesus is telling of this great truth to all who will listen. And as we could see, the crowd did not want to believe him. And they wanted to stone him because he was making himself equal with God. Now I ask you this. Could Jesus have taken any more powerful words upon his lips? Because when Jesus himself, when he said before Abraham was, I am. He took that majestic name of God. And, and, and he wrapped it in humility and servanthood. And then offered himself to atone himself for our rebellion. And he made a way for all of us to see glory, the glory of God face to face for those who believe in him. That's who Jesus is. That's who he, what he did for us. He was present with us from the beginning and he will be present with us till the end of time. In Jesus Christ, we who are born of God have the unspeakable privilege of knowing God as our Father. And we can hang on to that hope all the way to the day He comes. 
as long as you follow him. These two great words of I am, they're full of assurance to us that both God and Jesus, they're always near and present to us. We should take great hope in that. When, you, when you're struggling and you, you're battling whatever it is, cry out to the I am. Cry out to him and say, I know you're with me. Those two words should help reassure us that God is always with us and always present and always trying to help us get through. But we have to remember that he is the great I am. Now, if you keep reading here in John's gospel, you'll read of how Jesus made seven more profound I am statements. These statements, he says later in, in, this cha- in this book, he says, I am the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the last one is that Jesus says, I am the true vine. Jesus identifies himself as the great I am. And he's our redeemer. In fact, that he, he brings in the fact that he brings us closer to God. Through Jesus, we are redeemed, we are reconciled back to God back to his good standings when we believe in him and we gain our salvation through him. These two powerful words should give us hope that we are not in this battle alone. When the great I am is with us, then we shouldn't be afraid or or anxious about really anything. When we put our faith in the great I am, then we are given hope that we will have eternal life and we'll have it to the fullest with him. And we can rest assured that God is with us no matter what comes our way in life. That's when you have the battles in life, whether it's with health, whether it's with your family, whether it's with your finances, whether it's with work, whatever it is in the world, rest assured that I am is present. He exists. He's present. He's all-powerful. And he's always near to those who call on We just need to remember that the Lord is near the people who call on his name, who do his will, who follow it to the best they can. He's not asking for perfection. He's asking for faith. He's asking for you to give him the authority in your life, and he's asking that you do that daily. Not just when you feel like it, not just when it's convenient, but daily. Through the ups, through the downs, When you're feeling like you're a slave and when you're feeling like you're free, remember, he is the great I am. So as I wrap up, there's one more question I want to ask you here. The question is this. Are you drawing near to God and standing on the holy ground? Or are you continuing to pick up those stones and throw at him? To keep him out of your life. Peyton, unmute the unmute that, please. I think it's muted. Can you? If today don't put some music on, you yeah. might I have to adjust that for a second. Thank you, man. Technical difficulties we have, and we're not perfect. Our sound guy left. But if today you found yourself, you caught up, you're caught up in one excuse after another, and you and you found that you're kind of doing your own thing, and you're just giving God all the excuses of why you can't do His will, then I ask you to come now. Maybe today you you've been trying to to hang on to your own glory and try to push through and say, I could do this on my own. I don't need somebody to help me. Because, man, nobody's going to be there for me anyway. I'm telling you, I am is there. He's ready for you. God is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. They want to get nearer to you, but you got to let down that barrier. you got to give it to Him. If you have any prayers, if, 
if you have any needs, these altars are open. And this is where we pray. This is where we give it to God. This is where we come together as a church and encourage one another and draw closer to God. The Lord is present. He's near to His children. And, and He could only do that if you let Him get closer. If you drop that curtain, if you set down those stones and let Him near you. If you have any needs at all, I ask that you come now as a song prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we begin, we thank you. We just thank you for this message you've given us. We thank you for the assurance that we have that you're always with us, Lord. We ask that you be with us now as we go our ways, that you protect us and help us, that you guide us, that you hear our cries and, and help us with our needs, Lord. Lord, we ask for forgiveness when we've fallen short that you continue to shed your grace upon us, that you continue to strengthen us when we're weak. Please forgive those who, who did wrong against us as well, Lord, and we just pray that you continue to help us to have grace and mercy just like you show us. Lord, I ask for protection as we all go our ways now. Protect us as we go into this dark world. Help us to be the light that you want us to be, Lord. Help us to make, not make excuses, but to do your will. Father, guide us, protect us, help us to proclaim the truth of Jesus to everyone and everywhere. We love you, we thank you, we give you all the glory, and we praise your name. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, we will, I believe we are going to have an evening service tonight. It's at 6 o'clock, uh, if you don't, uh, we're going over the Chosen series in that. We do some uh, just time a cappella hymnal songs in the evening, and then we do a 20-minute uh, video, and then we discuss what we see and go over some Bible scripture to help relate with that video. And then Wednesday night, we have classes for all ages, young and old, at 7 o'clock. So those are our other times we can gather to worship and, and to learn some more. So I pray that you all have a blessed day. Tracy, where are you guys from? You guys from around here? Hold on. Please. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a drive. Oh, that's not too bad. We're out in the country. Oh, okay. Okay. How'd you guys hear about our church?